Hello and welcome to Burton Ween. <laughs> During the entire month of October, I will be rewatching and discussing films associated with Tim Burton. This includes films directed by Tim Burton, produced by Tim Burton, or simply inspired by his works. Jumping ahead in time for now, this stop-motion musical extravaganza is really something that needs to be seen to be believed. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you accidentally married a decaying corpse in Victorian England? No? Well now you get to find out! That's right, it's Corpse Bride. The film was directed by Tim Burton and Mike Johnson in a co-directorial setting. The stop motion was originally going to be done on film, but eventually was settled to be shot digitally with a basic off-the-shelf camera. The plot follows Victor Van Dort, played by Johnny Depp, as he's about to get married. When practicing his vows, he accidentally gets engaged to a corpse. Typical. The movie was shot simultaneously with Burton's adaptation of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which also starred Johnny Depp. Tim Burton later stating that doing both characters in one day was quite a challenge. The film opens up with an opening credit sequence that's actually fun to watch this time. Usually Burton credits are a long stairwell or an aerial shot, but this one takes us around the little town in England, seeing the everyday life of the citizens. Victor Van Dort is a shy and awkward fellow who is set up in an arranged marriage with Victoria Everglot, played by Emily Watson. When Victor fails to read his vows correctly and accidentally sets Victoria's mother on fire, typical, he laments his mistakes that night in the woods. Feeling an overwhelming burst of confidence, he rattles off his wedding vows perfectly and puts the wedding ring on a hand-shaped branch. But plot twist, Victor, it's actually decomposing corpse in bridal garb. Typical. Victor blacks out from this revelation and awakens in the land of the dead. That's the thing about Tim Burton films. When you die, you can either choose to go to Halloween Town, a sweet jazz club, or a waiting room. He's then properly introduced to Emily, played by Helena Bonham Carter. No, this isn't her first Burton movie, but I really didn't want to watch that one just yet. He's then informed by Bone Jangles, played by Danny Elfman himself, that Emily was a love-stricken bride-to-be when her fiancé murdered murdered her and stole her money. She then lay in her shallow grave, waiting for her true love to release her, which they believe to be Victor. He's scared out of his mind, as anyone would be, and he proceeds to run away. Meanwhile, up in the land of the living, the two families search for Victor as his wedding is scheduled to be very soon. Emily catches up to Victor and she brings him his dead dog as a present. How sweet. Victor suggests that Emily should meet his parents, so they visit Elder Gutneck, who prepares a potion to bring them up top. Victor tells Emily to wait in the woods so that he can prepare his parents for the news. He then takes off running for his life. He goes to visit Victoria to explain to her that marrying her would bring him much joy, even though they only had one moment together. Emily catches the two talking and realizes what's going on. Victor puts his foot in his mouth more times than a contortionist with a fetish. You lied to me! Just to get back to that other woman! Don't you understand? You're the other woman. And Emily is heartbroken, both literally and figuratively. She sings a sad song with a black widow and the maggot that lives in her eye socket, while Victoria attempts to discover the truth behind what's going on with Victor. She visits Pastor Galswell, played by the amazing Christopher Lee, who returns her to her parents' possession. Seeing as Victor has disappeared, they plan to marry off Victoria to the charming newcomer, Lord Barkus. Victor finds Emily, and they bond over a piano duet. Emily forgives Victor, and all seems well. Until Victor's old driver, Mayhew, appears as a new corpse and explains what's going on in the land of the living. Lord Barkus marries Victoria, then in secret plots her murder so that he can have her money. To add on to the murder topic, Emily learns that Victor is free to go, seeing that through a technicality and a pulse, death has already parted them. Victor agrees to kill himself so that he and Emily can be together, and they prepare for a grand affair. The dead roam the earth as Emily and Victor stand at the altar. During the mayhem, Lord Barkus demands his payment for marrying Victoria, but Victoria informs him that her family is completely completely broke. Victoria shows up to the wedding, and Emily realizes that this isn't right. I was a bride. My dreams were taken from me. Well, now. Now I've stolen them from someone else. I love you, Victor. But you are not mine. Lord Barkus arrives, and it's revealed that he was Emily's murderer, and now he plans on killing Victor, who's defending Victoria's honor. 
This leads to a sword versus fork fight and culminates in Barkus thinking he'd triumphed over them all. He proposes a toast and unknowingly drinks the poison intended for Victor, killing himself and leaving the dead to deal with him in any way they please. Emily is finally at peace, and as Victor holds Victoria close, she ascends to the heavens, her unfinished business complete. This movie is wonderful. It's such a strange and macabre concept that becomes such a warm and endearing story. The characters are delightful, the writing is well done. One thing I really love is the set design. The land of the living is all dark and gray and drab, and the land of the dead is all colorful and vibrant. It's a perfect metaphor for how the living must fear everything and play it safe, while the dead can do whatever they please and enjoy themselves. The acting is amazing once again. Helena Bonham Carter and Johnny Depp shine in any movie they're in, even the bad ones. All in all, I adore this movie, and you certainly will too. Next time on Burton Ween. Vincent Malloy is seven years old.